I, I got a book called Stories from Ancient Canaan, and it has four texts. Uh, I think they're called Ugarit texts, um, which basically show the religion of Baal. And the author who translated it is kind of making the argument that um, the Old Testament was a polytheistic text first, Mm-hmm. and then sort of became a monotheistic text after being edited by later authors. And right. I just want to preface this. That doesn't make any sense to me, given <laughs> that Genesis kind of only makes sense in a monotheistic framework. But um, Oh, guess... Jack, 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 you're just being too simple here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trust me, I, I went to is... Fuller Seminary, so I've, I've heard this for a long time. <laughs> well, since you went to Fuller... What are the other major liberal claims about the Old Testament, and why do they have so much sway? Um, we, I've, I've said a number of times, we uh, pretty much gave the Old Testament to the liberals about 150 years ago, and there are still a few good conservative Christian scholars out there, but even what used to be our trustworthy uh, Christian publishers don't tend to look to them, they tend to... Uh, to look to others, and that's why I've often said going into a Christian bookstore is one of the danger, most dangerous places you can go. Uh, and the, the commentary section is one of the most dangerous places you can go, because you assume, unfortunately, wrongly, that what you're going to buy there is being written by Bible-believing people, uh, when in reality um, so much of that material um, comes from a very different worldview, and that's especially true, unfortunately, of Old Testament scholarship today. And so the vast majority of Old Testament scholarship is based upon some form of the JEDP theory, the graf wellhausen theory, um, which all this stuff developed at the same time in, out of German rationalism and, and things like that. It's a application of naturalistic principles to the text of the Old Testament, beginning with the assumption uh, that the New Testament writers, and especially Jesus himself, were all washed up and wrong about their view of the Old Testament, uh, even though many of those people would still call themselves Christians, interestingly enough. And so once you look at the Old Testament text, something is written by 40 different authors, and of course, from their perspective, probably 400 different authors, uh, over, um, well, we would say 1,500 years, they would say over maybe 500 years, uh, between maybe 200 to 700 uh, is as far as, as most of them would go. Um, but once, once you are free of any controlling authority that says you need to look at the Old Testament as a whole, you need to uh, operate within the parameters of even Jesus' own teaching about the Old Testament, once you're free to uh, atomize it and cut it into parts, then uh, what uh, the, the limit, there are no limits. And so when you say, you know, what else is out there? Everything. Um, I mean, pretty much everything. Uh, if you go uh, and just scan the Old Testament titles of papers presented for the past five or ten years at SBL, Society for Biblical Literature, just look at the Old Testament stuff, scan. All you got to do is, even, you don't even have to read the papers. You just look at the titles of the papers, and you will sit there staring and drooling uh, at the insanity uh, that is that is Old Testament scholarship today. I mean, everything you'd expect, intersectionality, homosexuality, uh, this book as erotic literature in regards to Yahweh and other gods, and I mean, everything that you could ever find is going to be out there someplace, because there are no rules. So you can take any author, you can take any book, and you can just simply theorize that the form we have today was edited in this way, this way, this way, and this way. You don't have to pri- provide anything in um, as far as hard data is concerned, because because we're talking about such ancient literature, you only have manuscripts back to the Dead Sea Scrolls. So anything before that, yeah, once in a while we'll find a scrap here, a scrap there. But pretty much uh, once you push back past that point, then you can just engage in theoretical reconstruction of anything, and that's how you get published. That's how you do your dissertations, that's how you get published, you got to come up with something new. You're, if you're just simply trying to defend orthodoxy, or say, yeah, you know what, what Christians or even Jews have always believed about this is actually true, this could get you nowhere. 
So the very way we do scholarship in much of Western thought, um, the only thing that's going to get published is something that's new, and normally what's new is heretical. And so uh, that's where it got started. That's where it continues. And so uh, the idea that, well, I can tell you back in 1997 or 8, uh, Richard Mao, then president of Fuller Seminary, um, did a live thing. This was really uh, back in, in, in the day when, when Internet stuff was just starting. Um, he did a live thing, and uh, I actually asked him about the idea of uh, Mormon, because he's been big into dialogue with Mormons without really challenging Mormonism in any significant way. And uh, I mentioned the monotheism in the Old Testament. His response was exactly what you read. Well, it wasn't origi originally a monotheistic text. It, it eventually became a mon monotheistic text. There are, there are polytheistic texts in the Old Testament. There are henotheistic texts in the Old Testament. Then you've, you've got monotheistic texts. But the monotheistic texts are later on. So you stratify the Old Testament. You've got the Yahwist, the Elohist, the Deuteronomist, the Priestly, the JEDP sources. And then, of course... Since then, you've, you've had people introduce 47 other categories along with the JEDP. And uh, so you can just chop it up into, into bits and piece, pieces and parts do with it as you wish. And so if you ask what else is going to be heading your direction, pretty much everything, uh, because there's, there's no controls on this either. Uh, once you uh, abandon any type of meaningful understanding of what the Old Testament is, and certainly the idea of allowing Jesus... Uh, to have the final say um, is is going to uh, not be allowed in 98.8% uh, of all Old Testament studies programs in the Western world today. I hate Didn't to say that. Alma but that's... bring up the uh, polytheistic thing in y'all's uh, talk about who the real Jesus was? Yes. Um, all right. Well, on that, is there any, like, major specific things that liberals, like the, at the base liberal scholar of the Old Testament knows about this in particular theory and will launch it that way. Like I heard Guru Isaiah is like a big one. Mm -hmm. I'm, um, I'm, not, I'm not following the question. What about Deuteronomy Isaiah? Well, like that's a major theory that I know has a lot of sway. It, it, do all of these theories just get accepted like right away? Or like what is the measure? How do you, how do these <laughs> theories get well, uh, I, I, wish, uh, I wish I could say that there is this uh, uh, fair uh, uh, process of scholarly review that, that keeps bringing these things up and things like that. It, it doesn't work that way. Uh, my experience is uh, that if you go to a conservative seminary, you will unfortunately have to spend a lot of your time learning a lot about what the liberals believe. If you go to a liberal seminary, you will not spend uh, a moment of your time learning about what people used to believe or what people continue to believe on the other side of the aisle. You, it's an echo chamber, complete echo chamber. So think of, think of the modern liberal university, secular university echo chamber, and it's the same thing in liberal uh, seminaries. And so it's not that there have not been thorough and consistent critiques of this liberalism um, from conservatives over the years, it's that the liberals don't read conservatives. They don't care what we have to say. Every liberal I've ever debated, John Shelby Spong, uh, John Dominic Crossan, Marcus Borg, uh, Bart Ehrman, well, he's not really a liberal, he's an agnostic, but um, didn't, had not even Googled my name. I uh, had never read a, a word that I had said because they don't believe that there, we have anything meaningful to say. And so it's a one-way street. And so if you were trained in a liberal seminary, it's all you've ever heard. It's, it's just a given in your mind that uh, this is the Enlightenment view, this is what we've come to know, and the other guys on the other side are just closing their, their minds. And of course, they can point to some of the fundamentalistic responses and some fundamentalistic type schools where uh, they have the same attitude in reverse. You don't read anything from a liberal. Uh, that'll that'll you know uh, cause you to grow horns and uh, uh, read something other than the King James. So they use those <laughs> extremely rare um, uh, examples of that, and then do not interact with the entire spectrum of 
believing um, evangelical scholarship, reform scholarship that has responded to these things. And so there just isn't a whole lot of communication going on, and that's why it becomes our responsibility to uh, educate ourselves on these issues and to think presuppositionally, to examine what is being said, what we're being told, uh, presuppositionally, and be able to identify the foundational assumptions. I think that I think I can pretty certainly say now, after all these years, uh, that that's why um, the Lord had me go to Fuller Seminary, is that's where I learned to do that. Uh, I had to. There was no other game in town. Um, uh, did not have the money to go anyplace else. The ministry was already started. Uh, had, a, had a kid on the way. That was all I could do. And it wasn't fun, and it wasn't enjoyable in the sense that it might have been to go to some place where I would have had more um, uh, consistency with the viewpoints of the professors and things like that. By the way, I had some conservative profs because I, I went to the Phoenix Extension, so uh, I'm not saying everybody was like that. But I did have to learn to uh, listen and evaluate and to do so presuppositionally, uh, dig out the gems and throw away the dross. And um, we all have to do that today. All right. Um, last question. Do you know any conservative Old Testament scholars who actually deal and with and take apart these things? Because I'm just not familiar with them. Could you, like, direct me toward them? Because I would really like well, to get that. Um, there, there are books. Uh, it depends on what you're talking about. Uh, you got to remember that um, most of the time, in most of scholarship, if, for example, if you're looking at JEDP, then you're going to find articles that are going to deal with elements. It, it, trying to find books is, is difficult. You're generally focused upon finding articles. Um, you, if, you, if you look into uh, some of the conservatives like Gleason Archer and people like that, they will have bibliographies. Uh, everybody needs to learn how to mine. You know, when you find a really good book on a, on a related subject, then mining it, that is its bibliography and its footnotes or endnotes, depending on what the form is, that is just an extremely important skill to be able to, uh, uh, to find your, your resources in that way. Um, I do, I, I know where in the other room I have some various books related to this, but uh, off the top of my head, I'd have to go digging them up and, uh, and drag them out to give you some specifics. But if you, if you go to um, some of the current... Now, remember, I could, I, could, you know, I could say, hey, go to such and such seminary, find out who's teaching Old Testament there, look at their books, but you'd be surprised uh, if I mentioned even some seminaries that we would have general um, agreement with especially the Old Testament department, you've got to be really careful. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, but, but places like Masters, um, you know, you, you, you talk to their Old Testament people, and uh, they're going to they're gonna be able to, you know, their books are going to be where you're going to find the bibliographies that are going to give you. Uh, and, of course, their bibliographies are going to include liberal sources because they study liberal sources. But the footnotes and the quotes especially are where you're going to be able to find a lot of the good stuff. Um, I had a student uh, did a master's with me at Columbia. Uh, I was his mentor a number of years ago, uh, Colin Smith, that did a real good uh, paper on the JEDP stuff, which I think think we posted? I'm not sure. Uh, did we put Colin Smith's uh, JEDB paper uh, on the on the blog? I don't I don't remember. Uh, Rich is looking, so we'll we'll see. But uh, that's the best way to find that kind of information. All right. Well, thank you so much, oh, Dr. White. It is it's there. Been an honor speaking to you. Okay, it is there. By the way, if you uh, is th what's the title of it? Does it have JEDP in it? Uh, well, I.